A cooler head seemed to be prevailing in the U.S. around showdown. Tehran has signaled its revenge for the death of its top military commander has concluded, at least for now. Now, President Donald Trump hasn't taken any further military action against Iran, although he has foreshadowed tighter sanctions. Well, Iran has fired on Iraqi bases housing American troops, triggering fears that the region was on the brink of war. No casualties have been reported in the attack, which Tehran says was in retaliation for the killing of General Qasem Soleimani. Both sides then seem to take a step back, with Mr. Trump expressing hope for the future. To the people and leaders of Iran, we want you to have a future, and a great future, one that you deserve, one of prosperity at home and harmony with the nations of the world. The United States is ready to embrace peace with all who seek it. Iran's ambassador to the UN dismissed Mr. Trump's comment as unbelievable, given that additional sanctions are looming. And Mr. Trump didn't go into specifics, but has said any new measures will stay until Iran abandons its nuclear ambitions and ends its support for terrorism. And Simon Marks joins us now from Washington, D.C. So, Simon, a clear de-escalation to the crisis, but it seems for now, because there may be signs that this lull is only temporary? I think that's possible, Glenda. I mean, there's no question both sides have stepped back from the brink, having uh, sort of peered into the abyss over the course of the last four or five days. They clearly have decided to damp down the rhetoric. And it was notable that President Trump's rhetoric uh, was substantially damper here yesterday than it had been even over <clears throat> the course of last weekend. But you've got a senior Republican guard figure in Tehran uh, warning that harsher measures may yet be unleashed against American interests uh, in the region, possibly even elsewhere. And one of the fears that foreign policy analysts have here in Washington uh, is that while Iran says its military action has concluded against uh, the air bases uh, that it struck uh, several hours ago, uh, there's no way of knowing whether some of those militia groups, those proxies uh, that had been loyal uh, to General Soleimani uh, and indeed that he had essentially overseen, it's perfectly feasible that some of those militia groups may take uh, independent action against American targets inside Iraq that could then once again push everybody towards the edge of that abyss. But there's no question uh, that both in Washington and Tehran for the moment they've decided to step back and regroup and President Trump has opened up new lines of attack here, particularly in that press uh, appearance yesterday, uh, excoriating the Obama administration and saying that Iran uh, the rockets that it fired at American air bases had essentially been paid for by the Obama administration with, when it unfroze assets uh, that Iran had had frozen uh, in the United States and returned those assets to Tehran uh, in the form of cash. So domestically, at least now, the rhetoric is getting ugly, uh, even if on the, uh, the sort of the global scale between Washington and Tehran, things for the moment are calming down a bit. Well, yet, as you alluded to, it looks like he will have his hands full on the domestic uh, front answering uh, questions about his actions in the region. Yes, and there was a congressional briefing yesterday by uh, members of President Trump's administration uh, in which uh, the administration was going to pre present some of the classified intelligence that says, uh, they say, uh, led them to conclude that General Soleimani was planning some kind of spectacular terrorist uh, event uh, against American interests, even some Republicans came out after that briefing furious and said that they didn't believe that the administration had made its case successfully. Meanwhile, Democrats in the House of Representatives are seeking later today here to tie the president's hands on Iran. They're going to try and pass a resolution uh, in the House of Representatives that will ban him from carrying out any further military action unless he specifically gets congressional authorization for that action. That bill likely to pass in the House of Representatives where Democrats are in the majority, very unlikely to pass in the United States Senate where President Trump still has 
uh, the support of the majority of Republicans who control that chamber. But yes, there is now a domestic political front confronting uh, President Trump over this, even while, for the moment, Iran takes the back seat and President Trump tries to determine how to handle the rift with Europe, uh, where European leaders are extremely unhappy about President Trump telling them yesterday, give up on the Iran nuclear deal, it's over. All right, many thanks for that. Seven Mark speaking to us from Washington, D.C.